How are you? Good to see you. Thank you. Good, Good to see you. you. Good to be with you. Uh, we'll we'll look at in a minute. Thank you all for coming here, especially uh, our good friends, wonderful friends, senior advisor to the president, Jared Kushner, national security advisor, Robert O'Brien, uh, special representative for Iran, Brian Hook, special representative for the negotiations, Avi Berkowitz, uh, senior director for Gulf and Middle Eastern Affairs, uh, Major General Miguel Correa, CEO of the U.S. International Development Finance Corporation, Adam Bowler. We had tremendous discussions just now uh, with uh, Jared and Bo uh, Adam and the entire team. Uh, special assistant to the President, Rob Greenway. It would be a pleasure to host all of you in Jerusalem on any day, but it's a, a special a pleasure to do so today because tomorrow you will be on the first ever Israeli commercial flight to the UAE together with the, a high-level Israeli delegation. We're all thrilled by the pace, the swift pace of uh, normalization uh, between Israel and the UAE. Uh, yesterday, the Emirates officially abolished the anachronistic boycott of the Jewish state. And this opens the door for what I can only call unbridled uh, trade, tourism, investments, exchanges between the Middle East two most advanced economies. And you will see how the sparks fly on this. It's uh, already happening. The day will come, and it won't be far away, when we will ask, how could it have been any other way? Because today's breakthroughs will become tomorrow's norms. It will pave the way for other countries to normalize their ties with Israel. I think for far too long, the Palestinians have had a veto on peace, not only between the Palestinians and Israel, but between Israel and the broader Arab world. And if it were up to some of these Palestinians, Israel would have to withdraw to the indefensible 67 lines, expel over 100,000 Jews from their homes in our ancestral homeland, divide our capital, Jerusalem, flood Israel with descendants of refugees, put our country at risk while still refusing to recognize the one and only Jewish state. Now, this has been a long-held position on them. I told uh, Jared and the delegation that um, on the 100th anniversary of the Balfour Declaration, three years ago, they were suing Britain. They planned to sue Britain for the Balfour Declaration. So if, it's, uh, if we have to wait for the Palestinians, we would have to wait forever. Well, no longer. Two things have changed that. The first thing is the Trump plan, and the second thing is the willingness of Arab states supported enormously by the United States of America to advance peace without a Palestinian veto. The Trump plan is the first realistic initiative for an Israeli-Palestinian peace Israelis and Palestinians won't have to leave their homes. No one will be uprooted. Areas of uh, Jewish population and areas vital to Israel's security are envisioned being incorporated to sovereign Israel. And Israel retains overriding security control in the areas west of the Jordan River, both on the ground and in the air. I've expressed my willingness to negotiate peace on the basis of the Trump plan. And as more Arab and Muslim countries join the circle of peace, the Palestinians will eventually understand that their veto is dissipated, and they will be hard-pressed to remain outside the community of peace. We've been working at this for quite some time. Jared, you've been doing so in your own sphere with the able help of all your teammates and the Trump, President Trump. Uh, I was doing this from another direction three years ago. There were the first uh, flights from Israel to India over Saudi Arabia. And I believe that the United States helped with that as well. Two years ago, I visited Oman. One year ago, I visited Chad. Half a year ago, I met with the leader of Sudan. And these are a few of the publicized steps 
There are many more unpublicized meetings with Arab and Muslim leaders who recognize that their true interests are to normalize relations with the State of Israel. I believe that peace favors the strong, peace favors those who innovate, peace favors those who are willing to confront the neighborhood bully, peace favors Israel. Yet we could not seal this historic peace with the Emirates and with others that are in line without the tremendous support of our great and loyal friends from the United States of America. Jared, from the start, you said that more countries would make peace with Israel. You were uh, dismissed, sometimes ridiculed, scoffed at. Well, I'm glad I'll be charitable. I'm glad that those critics have been proven wrong, dead wrong. Uh, it's true that some countries still hold out, making the perfunctory statements in support of Palestinian demands, but we know that reality has changed because we have changed it. We are changing it as we speak. Uh, and I want to thank you for everything that you are doing in this regard. Of course, these uh, positive developments are not welcomed by everyone. While we seek progress and modernity, the tyrants of Tehran want to take us back to a dark age of theocratic medievalism. And if this murderous terrorist regime ever developed nuclear weapons or the means to develop it, they would promptly scuttle the peace and they would endanger the entire world. We must not let that happen. And we will not let that happen. I want to commend President Trump for standing up firmly to Iran, for abandoning the flawed and uh, dangerous JCPOA, for taking out such master terrorist is Qasem Soleimani for triggering, triggering the snapback sanctions at the United Nations. And I will be discussing these matters and more with National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien. In opposing Iran's war machine, the United States is showing true global leadership. I note with satisfaction that, like Israel, countries of the Gulf Cooperation Council are now openly, and I stress the word openly, supporting the American position. They quietly and discreetly uh, supported the opposition to the JCPOA, but now they've come out and openly supported the American position, and this reflects a change in the making. I call upon all countries to get behind the United States in confronting Iranian aggression. I want to thank each of you for your hard work. I want to thank President Trump for his steadfast friendship and support, our common goals of peace, prosperity and security are at hand. And as we stand against the purveyors of terror and aggression, we also stand ready to till the fields of peace and bring its bountiful fruits to our people and to our entire international community, to the world. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's good. Ambassador O'Brien. Thank you, Prime Minister, and uh, good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be back in Jerusalem, uh, especially on the heels of this historic peace accord between Israel and the United Arab Emirates, and it's always great to be here with my friend, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu. I bring you greetings from President Donald J. Trump, and Prime Minister, he sends his congratulations to you on this impressive accomplishment that uh, you've done on uh, you. help create on behalf of the people of Israel, uh, and, and he's... Uh, and those are heartfelt. Uh, the Abraham Accords represent the most significant step towards peace in the Middle East in 25 years. The UAE is the first major Arab state to recognize Israel since Jordan did so in 1994. I want to recognize my colleague, Senior Advisor to the President, Jared Kushner, and his entire team. I'd like to recognize our NSC team. Uh, they all worked very hard under President Trump's leadership uh, to assist the parties in reaching this game-changing agreement. Soon, these two important countries and key American partners in the region will exchange ambassadors, begin cooperation on a broad range of fields, including education, healthcare, trade, security, and finance. Combining Israel's innovation and creativity with the UAE's financial centers and, and capital is going to establish something that's truly incredible uh, for the Middle East. It's going to be very, very special. On the religious and cultural front, Muslims who wish to pray at the Al-Aqsa Mosque will be able to fly from Abu Dhabi to Tel Aviv, where they will be welcomed. Israel's security continues to be strengthened, and it is one of our highest priorities in the Trump administration. Our two nations have never been closer. Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, 
And so President Trump kept his promise and moved our embassy to this beautiful city. The U.S. has also recognized Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights. The Trump administration concluded that the establishment of Israeli civilian settlements in the West Bank is not per se inconsistent with international law, notwithstanding what the United Nations claims. President Trump has put forward the most serious, realistic, and detailed Israeli-Palestinian peace plan ever presented. The President's vision for peace proposes a realistic two-state solution while fully addressing Israel's security requirements. Because President Trump refused to continue appeasing Iran, the mullahs have seen their oil and other revenue reduced to the lowest point in history by the maximum pressure campaign led by the United States. Iran is facing an unprecedented financial crisis and what that means is Iran does not have the funds to, to support their proxies to pursue wars across the Middle East and to support terrorists. The United States designated the IRGC as a foreign terrorist organization and restored deterrence against Iran through decisive action. America also eliminated the ISIS physical caliphate and brought justice to its leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. Because of American and Israeli leadership over the past three and a half years, the future for Israel and the future for the entire region has never been brighter. We believe that other Arab and Muslim countries will soon follow the United Arab Emirates lead and normalize relations with Israel. And Jared and his team and our NSC team are working very hard on that front. Israel and the UAE are putting the region on a truly transformative path, one with stability, security, and opportunity. And I want to thank the Prime Minister, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Zayed, and of course President Trump. Because of their leadership and their courage, we have a new era between our three nations that is commencing today. Tomorrow, we will take off on an LL flight from Ben Gurion and land at Abu Dhabi International Airport. This will be the first ever commercial flight between these two new partner nations. This is my fourth visit to Israel. I first came here as a student in 1987. When I returned a second time in 2012, it was amazing to see what had happened to the startup nation. My oldest daughter studied here at BYU Jerusalem Center and she actually met her husband on campus. And so Israel has a very special place in the, in the hearts of the O'Brien family. I'm very much looking forward to the rest of my visit, Prime Minister, uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, celebrating this peace accord and our historic flight to the UAE tomorrow. Prime Minister, thank you for your, your warm hospitality for myself, for Jared, and for the, the whole delegation. Uh, may God bless Israel, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Robert, and thank you, Prime Minister, for your hospitality today and, and for your warm uh, words. Uh, today, obviously, we celebrate a historic breakthrough for peace, and it has been a long and a winding road to get here. Um, a day that we really should take a moment to celebrate because this is an accomplishment that does not happen often, did not happen easy, and is really thanks to a lot of great work that was done by a lot of people over the last years. Uh, you mentioned the detractors, and they were detracting not because they didn't have good odds to be detracting with and not because um, it wasn't an impossible task, but that was what the common uh, perspective was. And we worked uh, very much together to defy the odds and accomplish something that very few thought was possible. One of the reasons why they thought it was so impossible is that if you go back three and a half years when Donald Trump became president of the United States, uh, Israel and the broader Middle East had very serious problems. Iran and its proxy militias, Hezbollah, Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, uh, the different uh, groups, militias they were funding in Syria and Iraq, and also the Houthis in Yemen, were basically flush with cash after $150 billion in sanctions relief was granted and a $1.5 billion in cash was delivered to them. They were also on a glide path to a nuclear weapon, which would have meant permanent instability in this region and perhaps in the entire world. Syria and Iraq were totally destabilized and ISIS had a caliphate the size of Ohio. Uh, Christians were being killed. Uh, ethnic cleansing was occurring, and American journalists were being beheaded. Israel's relationship with America was at its lowest point in decades, and the United Nations had just passed a disastrous resolution which put Israel at great risk. When President Trump came into office, everything started to change very quickly. The first thing President Trump did was appoint 
uh, and our ambassador, Ambassador David Friedman, who will go down as the greatest uh, American ambassador to Israel in history. And he has worked very, very hard to work with President Trump and our team to strengthen the bond between America and Israel. President Trump immediately stood up for Israel at the United Nations against the rampant anti-Semitism by injecting common sense and pragmatism into the debate and really pushing things forward. President Trump exited the Iran deal, restored America's sanctions to Iran, greatly weakening their regional adventurism to make Israel and America's Arab partners in the region more secure. And then just two weeks ago, Secretary Pompeo announced the snapback of all United Nations sanctions against Iran. President Trump defeated the territorial caliphate of ISIS and eliminated its leader, uh, al-Baghdadi. And then against a lot of objections throughout the world, President Trump kept his promise, and he recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital and quickly moved his embassy here to Jerusalem, uh, where we'll be visiting at some point today. President Trump then recognized the Golan Heights, uh, Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights, and that also was another step towards uh, building Israel's security. And then on January 28th of this year, we released President Trump's vision for peace, which is a pragmatic and realistic blueprint for how we can have actual peace in this region. It's based on uh, the facts as they exist, and it shows that uh, the United States understands Israel's security needs, but what this uh, vision showed the world was that Israel was ready to make peace. And the offer that's been made to the Palestinians is a very gracious, realistic offer. And when they are ready to make peace, uh, they now have the opportunity to do so. And that offer showed other people in the region that Israel was serious, and that led to the breakthrough we've had here today. When President Trump uh, announced the deal, it shouldn't be lost on people that ambassadors from the United Arab Emirates, Oman, and Bahrain attended the ceremony at the White House, perhaps foreshadowing what we've been able to accomplish here. And then finally, on August 13th, not finally, just the last. There'll be a lot more to come. <laughs> on August 13th, President Trump, Prime Minister Netanyahu, and the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Zayed announced a historic peace agreement that will create previously unthinkable economic and security, uh, religious opportunities between the two, two of the greatest countries in this region. From President Trump's very first trip as president, when he went to Saudi Arabia and he addressed the 54 leaders of Arab and Muslim countries, and then went to Israel and then to Rome, he has been writing a script for a new Middle East. President Trump has been standing strongly with America's friends to accomplish our common goals and to defeat our common enemies. He has reversed 20 years of bad outcomes in the Middle East, and he has built a strong foundation for gr even greater progress to be made. While this peace agreement was thought by many to be impossible, the stage is now set for even more. Over the last three and a half years, a lot of people described the state of the Middle East as hopeless. But what I've felt over the last couple of weeks is a new sense of optimism, and we must seize that optimism, and we must continue to push to make this region achieve the potential that it truly has. Over the last two weeks alone, the United Arab Emirates and Israel have opened direct phone connections, have had calls between two countries' officials from the health and the foreign ministers. They've seen an end to the economic boycott of Israel after 48 years, and they've closed the first of what will be hopefully be many business deals to come. And then tomorrow, very proudly, I will be taking the first ever commercial flight from Israel to the United Arab Emirates, El Al Flight 971. This deal will bring Israel, the United Arab Emirates, and America closer together in our security cooperation as we face common threats. Four years ago, my father-in-law asked me to work on peace in the Middle East. I've given it my all. There is still much work left to accomplish, but the Abraham Accords is a giant step forward. To have played a role in its creation, and I say this as the grandson of two Holocaust survivors, it means more to me and to my family than I can ever express. We will continue to pursue peace between Israel, the biblical homeland of the Jewish people, and its Arab and Muslim neighbors, and I have never been more hopeful about peace. I want to thank Prime Minister Netanyahu today 
for his trust and for his friendship and for all of the different creative approaches that you've brought over the last years to many very complicated situations. And your leadership was instrumental in achieving this and all the other breakthroughs that we've made. I also want to recognize uh, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Zayed from the United Arab Emirates. Uh, he really is a visionary leader. He's very courageous. And what he's built with his country uh, is hopefully something that the rest of the Middle East can aspire to. And we're only here today because of his great courage and leadership as well. Finally, President Trump wanted me to relay that he is very proud of the bond that he has been able to restore between the United States and Israel. And through his actions, he hopes he has made Israel much safer and this region more stable with a much more prosperous future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all. Thank you.